Hello, it's uh, Paul Beckwith again, getting my jolt of coffee because uh, doing lots of filming today. So in the last video, I was talking about record high Arctic fresh water, how it will flow to the Labrador Sea, affecting local and global oceans. And this is happening now. And I didn't quite get a chance to get through this, paper, this um, discussion here. And this is a very important thing um, that's going on and, and will affect, uh, you know, the uh, will affect uh, climate in a big way is how the Arctic is connected to lower latitudes. So we're getting fresh water accumulating in the Arctic Ocean. You know, the Beaufort Sea is the largest Arctic Ocean freshwater reservoir, and it's increased its freshwater continent content by 40% over the past two decades. And then how and where this water will flow into the Atlantic Ocean is very important. And it turns out most of it will flow through the Canadian Archipelago down into the Labrador Sea. Okay, so this is a new study that shows that. We thought more, much more of it would flow out into the Atlantic um, along this method, but it comes down through, through this route. Okay, so the, the Canadian Archipelago is a major conduit between the Arctic and the North Atlantic. In the future, if the winds get weaker and the fresh water gets released, there is a potential for this high amount of water to have a huge impact in the Labrador Sea region. Okay, so fresher, lighter water entering the Labrador Sea could slow the overturning circulation, the AMOC. Okay, and, and the AMOC then has global implications. So we've got the Beaufort Gyre here, we've got fresh water piling up here, a freshwater lens, it's confined by the gyre. The winds weaken, then the water comes out through the Canadian Archipelago down here into the Labrador Sea and can affect the ocean, um, the, the, uh, the uh, Gulf Stream and the um, Atlantic meridional overturning circulation where the Gulf Stream comes up, warm salty water comes up here and then ice is formed, rejecting salt, the water density is larger, and then the water sinks to the ocean floor and circulates back down. Okay, so the Arctic Ocean is key for that gyre, and the fresh water now is still trapped in the Arctic, but once it gets out, it can, it will have a very large impact. So fresh water reaches the Arctic Ocean through rain, snow, rivers, inflows from the relatively fresher Pacific Ocean, as well as the melting of the Arctic Ocean sea ice, also glacier calving and then melting. Fresher, lighter water float to the top and the clockwise winds in the Beaufort Sea push the lighter water together to create a dome. When the winds relax, the dome flattens and the fresh water gets released into the, into the Atlantic. Okay, so the, where the fresh water goes is very important and very vital. So this is surface salinity. Um, and what you can see is the, the ocean, the average salinity in the ocean is 35 parts per thousand or PSU, that would be 3.5%. Okay, and here we go, Beaufort Gyre here, you know, is much, much fresher. Okay, it's down in this region, under 30 uh, PSU. Under, so under 3% salt in this region, you know, 3.5% is, is the average of the ocean. Okay, so these guys, the, what they're doing is they're tracking the um, movement of the water and the narrow passages between Canada and Greenland are the key. They were thought to be less important for freshwater flow than the much wider Fram Strait, which connects Northern European seas, right? But, uh, you know, they did, um, they modeled it and they also, you know, studied the, um, what was actually happening and they found that the volume of fresh water in the Beaufort Sea is about twice the size of the case studied at more than 23,300 cubic kilometers or 5,500 cubic miles. This huge volume of fresh water can have significant effects when, when it's released, okay, and affect the, the AMOC. And this is very important. And notice the link here to the, is back you know, we've got a circular loop. I've gone down a bit of a rabbit hole, but this is the, the loop where I talked about the Arctic Ocean being covered by shelf ice and filled with fresh water at two different times in the, in the last 150,000 years. So that leads me to this. This, is, this came out just very recently, a few days ago, February 25th, 2021. 
the, the, a new study, the Atlantic Ocean circulation is the weakest in a millennium. So, so this has been known for a while, but this study um, you know, examines it in more detail and it also relates the you know, weakening of the AMOC could result in more storms battering the UK, more intense winters in Europe more damaging heat waves and we're getting a heat wave in Europe right now and droughts across Europe. The AMOC will further weaken if global heating continues and could it's down about 15 percent but it could re reduce about 34 to 45 percent by the end of the century. Now whenever I see this by the end of the century I would say maybe by 2040, 2050 you know bring that up because uh, you know the Arctic is changing so quickly so we could get this tipping point and then the weak, the jet stream could just basically halt and reform at lower latitude. Would have huge consequences. So circulation has showed has already slowed by 15 percent. In 20 to 30 years, it's likely to weaken further, and that will inevitably influence our weather, so that we would see an increase in storms and heat waves in Europe and sea level rises on the east coast of the U.S. So here is the the AMOC. Okay, it's at its weakest in a millennium. So we've got the Gulf Stream coming up here. Weakened Gulf Stream means it goes along closer to the coast and raises sea level along the Atlantic coast. The sea level is rising here, about faster than just about anywhere else in the world. And then as it comes here, it sinks back down um, and, and you get cold, low salinity, deep water carried south to complete the cycle. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so these tipping points, you know, there was some research in 2018 showing a weakening of the AMOC, but this new paper says that it's unprecedented over the last millennium. Okay, uh, so the Gulf Stream, the AMOC, it's a conveyor belt. It brings warm water from the equator to high latitudes. Um, and of course, you know, don't mix this up with the, the jet stream. Okay, we've got the jet stream in the atmospheres and the Gulf Stream and the AMOC in the, in the oceans. Okay, so the higher temperatures in the Arctic are weakening actually both the jet streams and they're becoming wavier, also the ocean currents and they're becoming wavier. And uh, it's all related to the melting of Arctic sea ice. So very important paper. Um, this is a map showing you the region. So, uh, you know, this is one choke point here, shallow water, and this is the choke point here. And the studies with thorium showed this was all completely fresh water as well as this at those times of very brutal uh, cold from, from the Ice Age. So, um, and that map is from here. It's at the bottom here. If you just Google Arctic sea ice graphs, it's down here. And, uh, you know, you can see what the ice extent is doing. Sharp drop here in the National Snow and Ice Data Center. They, they messed up the data and the drop showed, showed you like showed it plummeting. But this is a good bathymetry map. Uh, just Google, Google, go to Google Images, Arctic Ocean Bathymetry. Here's, here's a good view here. This is an excellent bathymetry map of the Arctic Ocean. Uh, so you can see the ridges and stuff. This is the northernmost choke point. So this was all fresh water and this was all fresh water in those periods when I talked about. This is the choke point here. You can't see it. Um, but there, there's an excellent uh, image here of the ocean, Arctic Ocean circulation. I mean, this is worth a whole separate video just to show the circulation of the ocean. Again, this is a great site for this. Um, another image of the bathymetry, but again, you can't see, you know, the lower choke point but it's an excellent one. So what there is, is a couple things. The NOAA, this is the National Centers for Environmental Information. You can just Google NOAA maps, bathymetry, and this is the, the ridge here that I'm ta I was talking about um, where the water is very, very shallow, okay, down here. So very, very thick ice shells can block these channels and you're completely isolating the Arctic Ocean from the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. Google Earth has, uh, if you just Google Earth, uh, most people are familiar with it. Google, if you just Google Google Earth bathymetry, you get the same sort of thing. Instead of showing the topography, it shows you the bathymetry. So again, very shallow water here, here, all the way across here. 
And if you've got large ice shelves extending out from here this way and from Greenland this way, you can completely choke off this channel. This channel's choked off. So now the Arctic ice Ocean is completely isolated. Okay, so you can see that from the bathymetry. And you know, here's another view of it. So this is a great tool here. Uh, seafloor depth, you know, in all parts of the world. Like it, you can, you know, you can see the Marianas Trench and you know the deepest parts of the oceans. And uh, you can actually click. You can actually just uh, you know click on a spot, and it should give you the bathymetry down here. For some reason, it's just giving me the latitude, longitude, and the elevation of the camera. There, you, there we go. The, see the, the number here? Oh, so this is minus 192 meters. Okay, it gives you the water depth. Okay, so when the sea level is much lower, right, you can get, is this, yeah, yeah, so 3,600 meters deep. Okay, so this is extremely cool. If you want to, if you need bathymetry, you know, any data on bathymetry around the world, Google Earth um, bathymetry. And most people don't, don't know this. this. This is a very useful feature. Okay, now, of course, the sea ice extent, you can see um, the drop here. And again, they had it wrong um, recently. In fact, they say sea ice processing errors. They made they, they process the data incorrectly. Okay, so the next video I'm going to talk about is the I'm going to go back to this study because I think it's the most important of a new finding of what I've talked about: the Arctic Ocean being covered by a shelf ice and filled with fresh water. So the actual peer-reviewed paper is over here. And I'm going to talk all about that. It's right here. Okay, so I'm going to go in detail about this. Um, and then I've got also papers on the current AMOC circulation being the weakest in the last millennium, that paper, and also the Labrador Sea freshening linked to the Beaufort Gyre freshwater release, that paper. Okay, rapid reductions of in the Nordic Sea of ice, sea ice cover, and relation to global changes, and also the impact of abrupt sea ice loss on Greenland water isotopes. Okay, and there was a couple other things that are key. I just wanted to show you this. So Zach Leib, he posted, you know, we're to, before I was talking about the Arctic climate linkage to mid-latitude extreme weather, like the, ter the Texas uh, cold spell, and Zach posted a whole bunch of papers from, from present day going back, you know, to 20, 10 years or so. And these are all these icons here, are all these papers. You know, all these papers about the uh, Arctic and the heat wave and all this stuff. So, you know, I'm, I've talked a lot about this and I'll talk a bit more about it. But, uh, you know, I'm reading all of this stuff and you know, I'll do a bunch of videos on the jet streams and stuff. But before then, I think I want to talk about some general stuff and, you know, some of the excellent slides that uh, Peter Carter has generated. So, okay, so that's where we're at right now. So next video is just about this peer-reviewed paper. So thanks for listening. And remember to check out my website, my blog, paulbeckwith.net. And, you know, this is, these are done, this excellent, these excellent posts are done by uh, David Korn. Does a great, a great job, a great, a wonderful job. Um, and please consider donating to my PayPal account to support all of this work. So on to the peer-reviewed paper. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.